Olivia Kang has been featured in tons of magazines, including the coveted Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. And while she looked happy and healthy, she says she was anything but. She was battling body dysmorphia, sometimes not eating for days to remain as thin as possible. So she continued to be booked as a model. Today, she is speaking out about those struggles and her newfound confidence that comes from a surprising source. But first, more on her story. Model Mia Kang has got the look. Modeling since the age of 13, she has gone on to pose for magazine covers like Elle and ads for Max Factor. Beauty and brains. She has multiple degrees, including a master's in finance. And in 2016, she found a new passion when a short vacation to Thailand turned into a nine-month stay at a martial arts training camp. Mia is now a Muay Thai fighter, but recently she's making headlines for a different reason, opening up about her struggles with eating disorders in revealing Instagram posts, writing that at one point she hadn't eaten solid food in 10 days and smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, all to remain a size two. Mia Kang, welcome to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So can we just see that when you look at that, the super skinny photo of you, the, the one that, yeah, there on the left, mm -hmm. what, what do you think? Um, honestly, it's really emotional for me, um, even now, because I remember how much I hated myself. And I remember that moment when I took that photo and there were things that I was trying to hide. And that was the day before I shot my first issue of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. And I truly believed that they were going to send me home and I was going to get fired because I, I didn't look the part. Wow. Yeah. You grew up, you say, with a weight problem, that you were overweight as yes, a child? Yes, I grew up overweight um, and extremely bullied in school. Um, and when I was 13, I was told by doctors that I was, you know, that I should lose weight and I was at risk for um, diabetes and things like that. So I didn't know what to do. Um, so I stopped eating. How, and much, how much weight did you lose? Um, I lost about 80 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And were, did you get to super skinny even then as 13, 14-year-old? Yes, I did, and I got scouted as a model straight away. So I went from being that bullied girl. The boys that bullied me and made my life difficult every day were then asking me out. And uh, I was on billboards everywhere. And I learned, um, you know, kind of how superficial things are from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And how, and how to associate your own value with your looks. Right. Yeah. Exactly the wrong message, but one we send to our girls right. to this day. Right. Um, Nothing had changed apart from a number on a scale. And I was getting, I had a completely different life. I, I just as an aside, let me tell you, I was at a girls' school, a, a, a very nice girls' private school here in New York City mm -hmm. not long ago. And the parents were getting up talking about their children. And there was a, there, a few of the dads got up to talk about the school. And, and the first thing they kept saying about their daughters at this very empowered girls' school was, she's so beautiful. Oh, my daughter, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. And I was sitting there thinking, I, I understand how they mean it. But, like, what, what parent would get up there and the first thing they would say about their son is, he's so beautiful, he's so handsome, he's so good looking. Absolutely. It's just, we're, we still have it in our mindset that that's the number one thing Absolutely. girls need to be. That's their social value. Mm -hmm. So you were raised with that in your head just like so many uh, young girls yep. in, in America and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you become a model. Mm -hmm. And when you were telling yourself you were too, too big for that Victoria's Secret photo shoot, what were people in the industry saying to you? Um, so that photo the, of me when I was, I was, the feedback that I got was that I'd never looked better and I had a little bit more to lose. I was a couple pounds off. Yeah. And I truly believed it. And since I was 13, this is my whole world. If I don't work, I don't eat. Yeah. So I was so delusional about what was normal. I never ate meals. I'd, until I was 27 years old, I never ate meals. What did you eat? I would snack here and there to keep myself going. Otherwise, I would try to stick to liquids. Only liquids? I would eat in front of people at, you know, when, when I had to to show. But I never, by myself, I never ate meals. And, and you were smoking heavily. I smoked about a pack of cigarettes a day. Yeah. Because that kills the appetite? Or? Yeah. Okay. So it's extremely unhealthy. Yeah. I mean, there was, it was anything that, that would help me remain as thin as possible. So black coffee, narcotics, laxatives, diuretics, uh, uh, supplements, you know, taking probiotics and things like that. It was anything and everything that could 
help me. How much of that is the modeling world? Just because I know recently there was a model, a uh, Victoria's Secret model, Bridget Malcolm, who revealed that she had been, she put it, at war with her, with her body, at war with her body for years. This is, here's Bridget. Um, so how much is it that the modeling industry versus just our world? Um, listen, the industry has a standard of beauty that is unattainable and isn't focused on health, and that needs to change. Um, and it cre like I said, it creates this, this dysmorphia. It creates us versus ourselves. And you look at the magazines and you look at these girls and you think, wow, they're beautiful. It must be so great being them. They're so confident, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell you that we are the most insecure people in the world because we are constantly being judged every day. We know ourselves inside out. You know every flaw because every day there's somebody reminding you, you know, your thighs. For me, it was always my thighs, my hips, my, you know, there's always something and, and it consumes you. It completely consumes you. And I think that it's really great what's happening with the industry now that, that the standard of beauty is, is um, expanding. Yeah. And I think that, that it needs, we need to really focus on health. We're back now with Mia Kang. She is bravely opening up about a decade of eating disorders and body dysmorphia and the martial arts she credits with helping her recover. So you won the Sports Illustrated 2016 swimsuit model search. I did, You're yeah. tiny as ever yes. and you're doing the cigarettes and you're doing all. And then what, so what, what was the aha moment? Um, completely honestly, I was asked, um, I booked this major campaign and I was asked to go for liquids only before the shoot. So that was about 10 days. Um, and to be honest, in our industry, that's normal. But something inside of me, I broke down. I was a complete mess. And I'm never like that. I'm, I'm a pretty tough cookie. Um, but I think my body and my mind, after 17 years of this industry, had just had enough. They wanted me to look like how I was when I was 17. And I was 27. And my body was fighting it. My brain was fighting it. I did the 10 days. I did the campaign. And then I asked for a vacation to go to Thailand um, just to kind of reset. And then a 10 day vacation turned into nine months of me moving into a fight camp, living, breathing, eating, martial arts, All right, fighting. something called Muay Thai. Muay Thai, yeah. Which you have now become this amazing, amazing practitioner of, is that how we should say it? <laughs> I mean, it's like I mean, fighting, it's strong. <laughs> We've got yeah. great video of you doing it. And so what has this done for your psyche and your body? Um, it taught me so much. Uh, I still learn from it every day so much, but I really think I became physically strong, which made me mentally strong, which then transpired to every aspect of my life. I learned about myself. I learned to love my body. I learned to respect my body. I had lived my whole life thinking that food was a reward for starvation. And I finally learned to eat meals and learned that food is nourishment. I learned to respect myself. I learned to love myself. I learned about my insecurities and to learn to love them because they're not going anywhere. We all have insecurities. We all have them. So get comfortable with them. Yes. Learn to love yourself. Because you don't, I mean, I think we, we brainwash our young girls in particular. And, and as a woman, I don't think you, you realize you're brain, being brainwashed. You just think you have to be this stick figure until somebody stands up and says, no. Hold on, wait, no, you don't. And so how do you now, so you were a size two, I mean, you look like you're a size minus something in that, in that before picture there. Now you're a size eight. Yes. And when you see your size eight body now, how does it make you feel? How do you feel about it? I'm not going to pretend that I don't have insecurities because I do. And also, this is a new body for me. I'm, I'm adjusting into it. I'm learning to get comfortable with it. But I feel like I finally became a woman. I feel like I grew into my curves. I feel like I allowed my body to be itself instead of trying to force it to be something that somebody else was telling me that it needed to be. So are you over the eating disorders? It's something that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life, um, but there's progress. And I want so many people suffer from eating disorders and we don't even know it, but I want people to know that you can reprogram yourself. You can recover and it's a decision and you need to make that decision every day Every day, you need to work on it, but it does get better. I promise you, it gets better. Thank you. Thank you for telling your story. All the best with it. Thank you so much.
You look amazing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.